Hello, my name is Anthony Barocas with IEBA Communications, and today I want to talk to you about putting a B4 lens on a camera that is actually designed for a B4 lens, the Blackmagic Design Broadcast. If you've ever seen my videos over the course of many years, you've seen that I've championed putting B4 lenses with a constant focus constant aperture and a powered servo zoom onto large sensor cameras. Why? Because having the ability to zoom smoothly, the ability to be able to keep focus when you zoom, the ability to keep an aperture so that it doesn't change or adjust while you zoom, those are critical features in documentary, in news, and in various filmmaking. You'll see filmmakers do use zooms. As much as I hear people who are prime lens purists, Films do use zooms. Television uses zooms. Having a zoom lens is a critical function, and you can't do it with a still zoom lens. You, just, you can't. You could try, but you can't. It's not the same as this. This is an ENG lens. Now, there are filmmaking lenses. Panavision has made zoom lenses for film cameras for probably the better part of a century. And since large sensor cameras have come out, lens makers like Fujinon and Canon have come out with servo zoom cinema lenses which are made for the larger sensors. Now, if you want to spend $30,000 for a Canon signed servo zoom for a, uh, for a Super 35 sensor, you can do that. Or, I paid $600 for this one off of eBay. Now, what is this? This is an old ENG lens from a standard definition camera that nobody wanted anymore because standard definition isn't shot. Does that mean the glass sucks? Not at all. If you buy a still lens from the 80s, are you going to say your pictures suck? Not at all, because glass is glass. Glass is good. Glass is made as, gla as well as glass could be made when they made it. So this is not limited to standard definition. It's not like, oh, I can only shoot 640 by 480 with this lens. No, I put it on a 4K camera and you'll see the results coming up. Now, why would you do this? Why are people, why is this? cycle finally coming back? Well, because people needed something that they could quickly, easily pull out of a bag and start shooting in 4K. Now, you can find solutions, 4K ENG cameras from Sony and Panasonic, they're going to cost upwards of $25,000. This body is under $5,000. You can add the viewfinder, the handle, the shoulder mount. The shoulder mount comes with an extra handle down here. You can put rails in the front. It's a very capable system and you could be out the door for less than $10,000, including power. Now, I've got an IDX battery on the back here, but you can choose V-Lock, you can choose Anton, Anton Bauer, whatever the heck you want. I don't care. This lens is parfocal, meaning if I zoom in all the way, focus, and I zoom back out, it's still in focus. It's constant aperture, which means if I set f2.8, and I zoom, it's still f2.8 all the way through. It's a lot of engineering. These lenses were not cheap when they came out. Now they're cheap because they're old standard definition lenses and lens technology has improved over time. Coatings have gotten better, tolerance has gotten better, and the lenses themselves are now have digital capabilities in that you can push a button, it'll zoom in, so you can focus and zoom right back out to where you were. They're very capable lenses and they'll provide metadata back to the camera. This old lens, not so much. So. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to put this through a few tests. It's a heavy camera. It's a 15 pound fully rigged out here. I put this on the scale, this is 15 pounds. Do I like my GH4? <laughs> it's a lot lighter. I'll be honest about that. But this camera does everything you would ask an on-shoulder 4K camera to do right out of the box, except maybe have a place to mount a shotgun microphone. You had to figure something else out there. A few caveats that I found in testing is that um, 15 pounds gets heavy. You know, if you're not used to it, it can, you know, it wears on your back after a while. An all day of news shooting on an expo floor, yeah, you're gonna feel the 15 pounds after a little while. It's gonna hurt. Um, the buttons here are right, like, if I'm looking through the viewfinder, the buttons are literally right where my cheek is because that's where the shoulder mount is because that's where the center of balance is. This whole section should be like out here a little bit more which would be easier to use if you are doing this on your shoulder. The big ENG bodies of old were quite larger than this, not as wide, but they were taller, they were longer, and the weight from the battery was put further back. So you would have the shoulder mount further back and these buttons would be further forward. 
this camera is so small and compact that you run into an issue where there's not enough space for everything to go, especially with your face right here. There is a little earpiece right here, which I am very thankful. You don't have to wear headphones to hear the audio. You can hear it just by having your head up, which is a great ENG convenience. Um, this viewfinder, the way uh, Blackmagic has got this worked out, you can adjust up, you can adjust down, depending on how where your head is. You can push it fore and aft, you can go side to side. It's very adjustable. And I like the build of it. It is very solid. It is very, feels very durable, almost to the point where, hey, you know what? I'd actually be willing to give up some of that durability if you make put some carbon fiber in this body, if you put a little magnesium up here on the handle and use some plastic on the viewfinder because every ENG camera I used for decades, the viewfinder was plastic. Why? Because it's heavy. <laughs> and their goal was to make the whole thing lighter. Now, yes, I may have gone up to 20 pounds with ENG systems of old. This is only 15, fully rigged with a battery and viewfinder on it. But still, we got a smaller body. We can, we can do some weight savings here. You can't do anything about the lens. That's glass. Glass weighs what glass weighs. But this stuff can certainly all be a little bit lighter. And maybe there could be a version uh, 2.0 of the broadcast with a more dedicated viewfinder that doesn't need all this extra metal hardware to hold it in place and it could be 10 pounds and losing 33 percent of the weight that would be very nice so let's take a look at some tests the eng lens this parfocal power zoom lens on a 4k camera this is what i've been shooting with for a few years now and the limitation has always been that these two aren't really designed to work together. There's issues with the way the G4 lens, the B4 lens is built that makes it not suitable for a single sensor camera. And we've always been waiting for somebody to do something about that. Well, it turns out that somebody is Blackmagic. This is the Blackmagic design Ursa Broadcast. We're going to give these head to head and I will be moving this lens between the two cameras. So it's not going to be a test of the lens. It's going to be a test of the cameras. 4K on Micro Four Thirds versus 4K on the Ursa Broadcast. All right, we are recording to the CFast card. What we're looking at here is we're looking at the chain and highlights. As I push and pull focus, do you see any chromatic aberration in the chain on the Ursa broadcast? All right, this is the GH4 in 4K at the same 120 millimeters as the B, the uh, Ursa broadcast. However, we have to use the doubler so that it fully covers the sensor, especially in the wide area. So we are at, at the doubler, so we're technically at 240 millimeters, which means I need to zoom out a little bit in order to get the same framing as I had with the Ursa. So let us slide that over there. The sun is being a little bit of a challenge today, going in and out of clouds. But this way we can push and pull and look for that chromatic aberration. And again, this is the same lens, but with the doubler engaged. And the sun just dipped away. Just for comparison, this is taking the doubler out on the GH4 at the telephoto end. It fully covers. It's just not as wide. So this is the B4 lens with the exact same setup as the Ursa but without the slight enlargement in image area caused by the optical corrector.
All right, here we are. Uh, we're minus 60B. I am at F28. Yes, F28 on the lens. And I am pulling focus through a tree against a sunlit sky in the background. And I can see a little bit of purple fringing on some of the branches as I pull through. I am at full telephoto on this lens. All right, here we are looking up at the sky. Pushing and pulling with a very bright background, backlit clouds. I am seeing a lot of teal, uh, chromatic aberration around the tree parts. This is the same test with the doubler engaged. Does adding more glass in between make a difference? Again, that sun is coming in and out, so it's presenting quite a challenge. So this is a test of the lens correction. A B4 lens is a power servo lens. We could do a constant zoom. It's constant aperture and it's par focal. So I can zoom all the way out through the entire zoom range. That's all the way out. And it looks a little straight. Center is Got a little bit of a bubble to it, but overall, the image looks remarkably free from distortion all the way through the zoom range. All right, and now we are doing the zoom test on the GH4. We are in 2X, F of 4. I have set the camera into auto because I can do that. And this way it will automatically change exposure based upon whether the sun's gonna go in or out behind the clouds. So as we zoom out, with the doubler, it will fully cover the 4K sensor on the GH4. And it looks really good. Still the same kind of bowing as I see on the Ursa. So could be a lens issue more so than a correction issue. Because I also see the same thing on the GH4 and it doesn't have the correction. Now, this is, of course, as I said, with the doubler in. And we can vary the speed of our zoom. Now let's take the doubler out camera will readjust and now let me just double check that focus and slowly zoom out again we're still at f4 on the lens gh4 4k and now you can see the edges coming in on the circle of light But you can also see it's much wider, seeing things that we didn't see before. So technically, if you needed width versus coverage, 
and you could crop into the sensor. Actually, let me take off the... There we go. That is actually what the lens covers without the lens shade on there. So you actually get a, quite a bit of coverage more than when you engage the doubler. Again, without the doubler, you see there's a, a heater over here. Heater to that, and then with the doubler, quite a crop, quite, quite a difference. You could almost say it's twice as close with the doubler. So I just finished testing this GH4 with this lens, taking the lens hood off. And you can see from the video that the Ursa does a really good job with the correction to both expand the image and to deliver a really nice 4K image. And there's something to be said for having a camera that's as small and as light as this. Um, it's less than a pound, I think. And it records beautiful 4K and I can use these lenses, I can zoom just by pushing the button. I have a full servo zoom because it's externally powered. And that's what I've been promoting for years. But to go to the Ursa is something else entirely. This is engineered from the ground up to be an on-shoulder broadcast camera, hence the name broadcast. It gives you the ENG lens capability that we had before everybody started moving to large sensor cameras, but gives you 4K in a very affordable body. Now. To really trick it out, you need the, the shoulder mount, you really need the handle. The eyepiece is a, the viewfinder is beautiful. It is a beautiful viewfinder. I just find that assembly of the viewfinder with the handle onto the top of the camera is way more cumbersome than it needs to be. And this whole assembly up here is quite heavy. So you're adding a lot of weight just with the viewfinder. All in all, I really like this implementation. I really like this camera. Um, design niggles, trying to get to these buttons while your head is in the way. Uh, the weight of the viewfinder assembly. I look forward to seeing what this camera can be in the future, especially with some lighter accessories, a, a shoulder mount that's got more of a grip than just hard plastic. I'm using a an SD lens for lack of a better term, just to indicate how old this lens is. It's not an HD lens, it's not a 4K lens. So all of my tests watch with that in mind, understanding that if you put newer, better, and obviously more expensive glass on the front of your Ursa broadcast, you're gonna get better images, less flaring, less chromatic aberration, uh, and just you know prettier pictures overall. Although older glass, just like with still cameras, you put some old glass on a new camera, you can make some really pretty images. It's not horrible glass at all. It's just glass. Coatings have gotten better. Digital communication has gotten better. Tolerances have gotten better. But it's not like you're going to see the difference between an Instamatic camera and a DSLR. With that, this has been Anthony Barocas with IABA Communications with my look at Black Magic Design's Ursa Broadcast.